Tales of a Wayside Inn by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow The Musician's Tale, Section 13 King Olaf and Earl Sigveld On the grey sea sands King Olaf stands, Northward and seaward he points with his hands. With eddy and whirl the sea-tides curl, Washing the sandals of Sigvald the earl. The mariners shout, the ships swing about, The yards are all hoisted, the sails flutter out, The war-horns are played, the anchors are weighed, Like moths in the distance, the sails flit and fade. The sea is like lead, the harbour lies dead, As a corse on the seashore whose spirit has fled. On that fatal day, the histories say, Seventy vessels sailed out of the bay, But soon scattered wide o'er the billows they ride, While Sigvald and Olaf sail side by side. Cried the earl, I your pilot will be, For I know all the channels where flows the deep sea. So into the strait where his foes lie in wait, Gallant King Olaf sails to his fate. Then the sea-fog veils the ships and their sails. Queen Sigrid the haughty, thy vengeance prevails. Section 19. King Olaf's War Horns Strike the sails, King Olaf said. Never shall men of mine take flight. Never away from battle I fled. Never away from my foes. Let gods dispose of my life in the fight. Sound the horns, said Olaf the king, and suddenly through the drifting broom the blare of the horns began to ring, like the terrible trumpet shock of Ragnarok on the day of doom. Louder and louder the war horns sang over the level floor of the flood. All the sails came down with a clang, and there in the mist overhead the sun hung red as a drop of blood. Drifting down on the Danish fleet, Three together the ships were lashed, so that neither should turn and retreat. In the midst, but in front of the rest, the burnished crest of the serpent flashed. King Olaf stood on the quarter-deck with bow of ash and arrows of oak. His gilded shield was without a fleck, his helmet inlaid with gold, and in many a fold hung his crimson cloak. On the forecastle Ulf the Red watched the lashing of the ships. If the serpent lie so far ahead, we shall have hard work of it here, said he with a sneer on his bearded lips. King Olaf laid an arrow on string. Have I a coward on board? said he. Shoot it another way, O king, sullenly answered Ulf, the old sea-wolf. You have need of me. In front came Svend, the king of the Danes, sweeping down with his fifty rowers. To the right the Swedish king with his thanes, and on board of the Iron Beard, Earl Eric steered on the left with his oars. "'These soft Danes and Swedes,' said the king, "'at home with their wives had better stay "'than come within reach of my serpent's sting. "'But where Eric the Norseman leads, "'heroic deeds will be done to-day.' "'Then as together the vessels crashed, "'Eric severed the cables of hide "'with which King Olaf's ships were lashed, and left them to drive and drift with the currents swift of the outward tide. Louder the war-horns growl and snarl, sharper the dragons bite and sting. Eric the son of Hakon Jarl, a death drink, salt as the sea pledges to thee, Olaf the king. Section 20. Einar Tamberskelver It was Einar Tamberskelver stood beside the mast, from his yew-bow, tipped with silver, flew the arrows fast, aimed at Eric unavailing as he sat concealed, half behind the quarter-railing, half behind his shield. First an arrow struck the tiller, just above his head. Sing, O Avin Skaldaspilla, then Earl Eric said. Sing the song of Hakon dying, sing his funeral wail, and another arrow flying grazed his coat of mail. Turning to a Lapland yeoman, as the arrow passed, said Earl Eric, Shoot that bowman standing by the mast. Sooner than the word was spoken flew the yeoman's shaft. Einar's bow in twain was broken. Einar only laughed. What was that? said Olaf, standing on the quarter-deck. 
something heard i like the stranding of a shattered wreck einar then the arrow taking from the loosened string answered that was norway breaking from thy hand o king thou art but a poor diviner straightway olaf said take my bow and swifter einar let thy shafts be sped of his bows the fairest choosing reached he from above einar saw the blood drops oozing through his iron glove but the bow was thin and narrow at the first assay o'er its head he drew the arrow flung the bow away said with hot and angry temper flushing in his cheek olaf for so great a kymper are thy bows too weak then with smile of joy defiant on his beardless lip scaled he light and self-reliant eric's dragon-ship loose his golden locks were flowing bright his armour gleamed like saint michael overthrowing lucifer he seemed section twenty one king olaf's death drink all day has the battle raged all day have the ships engaged but not yet is assuaged the vengeance of eric the earl the decks with blood are red the arrows of death are sped the ships are filled with the dead and the spears the champions hurl they drift as wrecks on the tide the grappling irons are plied the boarders climb up the side the shouts are feeble and few ah never shall norway again see her sailors come back o'er the main they all lie wounded or slain or asleep in the billows blue on the deck stands olaf the king around him whistle and sing the spears that the foemen fling and the stones they hurl with their hands in the midst of the stones and the spears colbjorn the marshal appears his shield in the air he uprears by the side of king olaf he stands o'er the slippery wreck of the long serpent's deck sweeps eric with hardly a check his lips with anger are pale he hews with his axe at the mast till it falls with the sails overcast like a snow-covered pine in the vast dim forests of orkadale seeking king olaf then he rushes aft with his men as a hunter into the den of the bear when he stands at bay remember karl hakon he cries when lo on his wondering eyes two kingly figures arise two olafs in warlike array then kolbjorn speaks in the ear of king olaf a word of cheer in a whisper that none may hear with a smile on his tremulous lips two shields raised high in the air two flashes of golden hair two scarlet meteors glare and both have leapt from the ship earl eric's men in the boats seize kolbjorn's shield as it floats and cry from their hairy throats see it is olaf the king while far on the opposite side floats another shield on the tide like a jewel set in the wide sea currents eddying ring there is told a wonderful tale how the king stripped off his mail like leaves of the brown sea kale as he swam beneath the main but the young grew old and grey and never by night or by day in his kingdom of norway was king olaf seen again section twenty two the nun of nidaros in the convent of drontheim alone in her chamber knelt astrid the abbess at midnight adoring beseeching entreating the virgin and mother she heard in the silence the voice of one speaking without in the darkness in gusts of the night wind now louder now nearer now lost in the distance the voice of a stranger it seemed as she listened of some one who answered beseeching imploring a cry from afar off she could not distinguish the voice of saint john the beloved disciple who wandered and waited the master's appearance alone in the darkness unsheltered and friendless it is accepted the angry defiance the challenge of battle it is accepted but not with the weapons of war that thou wieldest cross against corslet love against hatred peace cry for war cry patience is powerful he that o'ercometh hath power o'er the nations 
as torrents in summer half dried in their channels suddenly rise though the sky is still cloudless for rain has been falling far off at their fountains so hearts that are fainting grow full to o'erflowing and they that behold it marvel and know not that god at their fountains far off has been raining stronger than steel is the sword of the spirit swifter than arrows the light of the truth is greater than anger is love and subdueth thou art a phantom a shape of the sea mist a shape of the brumal rain and the darkness fearful and formless day dawns and thou art not the dawn is not distant nor is the night starless love is eternal god is still god and his faith shall not fail us christ is eternal interlude a strain of music closed the tale a low monotonous funeral wail that with its cadence wild and sweet made the long saga more complete thank god the theologian said the reign of violence is dead or dying surely from the world while love triumphant reigns instead and in a brighter sky o'erhead his blessed banners are unfurled and most of all thank god for this the war and waste of clashing creeds now end in words and not in deeds and no one suffers loss or bleeds for thoughts that men call heresies i stand without here in the porch i hear the bells melodious din i hear the organ peal within i hear the prayer with words that scorch like sparks from an inverted torch i hear the sermon upon sin with threatenings of the last account and all translated in the air reach me but as our dear lord's prayer and as the sermon on the mount must it be calvin and not christ must it be athanasian creeds or holy water books and beads must struggling souls remain content with counsels and decrees of trent and can it be enough for these the christian church the year in balms with evergreens and boughs of palms and fills the air with litanies i know that yonder pharisee thanks god that he is not like me in my humiliation dressed i only stand and beat my breast and pray for human charity not to one church alone but seven the voice prophetic spake from heaven and unto each the promise came diversified but still the same for him that overcometh are the new name written on the stone the raiment white the crown the throne and i will give him the morning star ah to how many faith has been no evidence of things unseen but a dim shadow that recasts the creed of the phantasiasts for whom no man of sorrows died for whom the tragedy divine was but a symbol and a sign and christ a phantom crucified for others a diviner creed is living in the life they lead the passing of their beautiful feet blesses the pavement of the street and all their looks and words repeat old fuller's saying wise and sweet not as a vulture but a dove the holy ghost came from above and this brings back to me a tale so sad the hearer well may quail and question if such things can be yet in the chronicles of spain down the dark pages runs this stain and naught can wash them white again so fearful is the tragedy <laughs> 